happen. Okay. I guess we will get started then. All right, everyone. So July 14th, 2020. This is the full hearing for the Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals. A uh, couple notes on WebEx. Well, uh, the way it's going to work is when your case is called, I will elevate you to a panelist, and that way the board can see you and hear you. Um, if you are in opposition or in support of a case and wish to testify, there is a raise your hand feature in WebEx. Um, you will see it right next to your name if you look at the attendee list. And if you click on that, then we'll know that you want to speak, and I can unmute you, make you a panelist so that you can be heard. Uh, similarly, for people who are calling in, it looks like we have two or three call-in users. Um, what I'll do is at the, at during each case, I will just unmute you for a minute and you can either stay silent or say that you wish to speak. Um, and if you have any issues uh, calling in or logging in or trying to speak, you can go ahead and call our office at 410-396-4301. And you can also use the chat feature um, so that we'll see that you're trying to testify. Um, and oh, also really important, please keep your mic on mute um, if you are not speaking. So that kind of breaks, uh, cuts back on any background noise um, or use headphones if that's helpful. And I believe that's everything. Oh, I should say who's here. So <laughs> we have our chair, our chairman of the board. Mr. James Fields, and then we have board members, Sabrina Turner, Michelle Middleton, Bill Cunningham, and Avery Strachan. We also have staff members from the BMZA office, uh, Martin French from the planning department, and Marianne Navarro from the mayor's office. And at that, I will pass it on to our chair. Very well. Thank you, Mr. New. Uh, as we always advise, uh, the board will vote on each case to make a decision at the end of the docket uh you're certainly free to uh, listen in uh, to that deliberation otherwise you can call the bmda office tomorrow after 9 a.m the number is 410-396-4301 uh, in any event you should receive your resolution in the mail within 30 days uh, as we always ask please do not do any work until your resolution is received and do not uh, do any work in Baltimore city without pulling the property defense. Uh, we do have one postponement on the docket today. Uh, it's been previously granted a uh, case number 2019 439, 1611 Guilford Avenue, Guilford Brewing, LLC. Uh, that matter is postponed and that will be reset on the docket uh, at a later time. Uh, we do have uh, at least one matter on the consent docket. Consent cases are those cases uh, for which the board has concluded that we have sufficient information to grant the request. Um, and I will call that case now, which is case number 2020 70 1436 Hobart Street. Adam Caballo to construct a two story rear addition and new third floor. And I'll ask if we had any staff reports for that matter. Nothing from staff, uh, Mr. Chairman. Anything? Martin French for the Baltimore City Planning Department. Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Uh, very well. Uh, Mr. Carvalho, are you on the line? Uh, yes, I am. All right, sir. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add to your application at this time, sir? Uh, no, sir. Very well. Well, the board, having heard your appeal, we believe we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Come on. Thank you. All right. Uh, next on the docket, we'll be calling two cases uh, together. Uh, they're represented by the same uh, advocate here. Uh, case number 2020-75. 2801 West Lafayette Avenue. Uh, Mr. Previs, uh, Peter Previs, to challenge as a matter of law the validity, I'm sorry, validity of Baltimore City Code, zoning section 14 336, 18 701, and all other related ordinances impacting retail goods establishments with alcoholic beverages sales. Uh, so it's case 2020 75, which is 2801 West Lafayette Avenue, and case 2020 76, 3000 Windsor Avenue. Uh, for Mr. Previs. So I do not see Mr. Previs on the attendee list unless he has called in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to one by one mute each of our call in users. If you are Mr. Previs, then please say so. So the first one is 41, the phone number starts with 410 710. 
And you'll hear two beeps when I unmute you. Okay, so it doesn't look like that's him. Um, next, call in user three. Phone, phone number starts with 410805. Um, that's me, but I'm for 1154 North Stricker. Okay. All right. I'll make a note of that to call you when that comes up. Um, okay, so I don't see Mr. Previs on here. Um, I guess we can call it again at the end of the docket, which. All right, well, we can certainly circle back to Mr. Previs. In those cases, um, this time we'll call the case of 2020-86-1154 North Stricker Street. Uh, the appellant being one, one trust LLC, care of Ibrahim, Ibrahim Alrefe. It's a request to use the ground floor at the convenience store with the remainder to be used for accessory store. So I don't see that list on the attendee list either. Um, let me see if it's one of the other names based on the application. And Levu, I believe one of the call-in users was calling in about that particular case. She may be um, speaking on behalf of the applicant. Oh, okay, let me unmute her. But I would verify that first uh, with her. Yes, yes. Hi, yes, my name is Andrea Tony. And I'm representing uh, One One Trust LLC. Excellent. Uh, do we have any staff reports for this project? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we do have one letter in opposition. Um, it is from a community association that identify themselves as SWIA. I do not know what that stands for. Um, their only opposition testimony is that they oppose storage and grocery stores uh, because they need uh, more affordable housing in that community. Uh, and that's all we have. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. French, anything from planning? Yes, thank you. Uh, first, in regard to that SWIA, that may stand for Sandtown Winchester Improvement Association uh, because this property is located in the Sandtown Winchester community. The planning department has reviewed this application, noted that this property was last used as a retail goods establishment with, with alcoholic beverage sales, which is now a prohibited use in this RA district. The building, therefore, is eligible for consideration for neighborhood commercial establishment use. The <clears throat> department has received comments from the community concerning the reopening of a commercial use in this uh, location. And for this reason, uh, the department is recommending approval of the application if it is granted, be subject to the condition that the approved uses hours of operation are limited to 9 a.m. through 9 p.m. or a similar 12 hour span of time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. French. Uh, again, the applicant representative, um, yeah. having heard uh, from planning, uh, should the board be favorable to uh, favorably disposed towards this application, is that a condition in which the applicant is willing to agree? Hours? Yes, yes, absolutely. We, we agree to the um, operating hours from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, uh, the floor is yours. Tell us about your project, ma'am. Okay, um, we're just um, planning on opening a um, neighborhood convenience store um, with groceries, you know, selling neighborhood groceries and local, you know, things of that nature. Um, and upstairs um, is just for storage of, you know, just to have it because there's two additional floors that are up there and we just plan on using those floors for storage of our items. And then uh, we just plan on to add um, to it. We have spoke with several of the other neighbors um, in, the, in the neighborhood who actually welcomed when we were hanging the signs out there that we weren't putting in a, a liquor store. So we weren't planning on doing that and uh, we weren't putting care out establishment or anything that just a, uh, neighborhood um you know sort of convenience store okay and we're very we're very um conscious of you know uh the hours of operation actually we're glad about those um hours of operation and don't you know plan on adding to the community tell us about your um the physical location uh, lighting conditions security availability cameras things of that nature yes Yes, yes, we will absolutely um, be doing that and put security on it. We're on a corner location of um, Winchester and Stricker. So we intend on um, putting um, 
lights outside and security, and we will have a security um, system in the location and on the out, you know, with lighting on the outside. And there's only two locations, uh, two entrances, you know, that come into the property besides the rear of the building, which is fenced in, um, which the other two doors already have roll up metal doors on them for security. So they don't have a lot of glass and things of that nature that's um, building. Are you familiar, ma'am, with the with the history of the retail use at that location prior to uh, prior to now? Yes, we did. We looked it up, and prior to the um, grocery, I mean, to the liquor store that was there before, um, it was a um, convenience store and a carryout, I believe, before. So um, that's why we're familiar that it was sort of a you know commercial um, businesses that were in that location before. And the way the building is designed, it's not designed really for residential use. Okay. And do you have any knowledge of the past history uh, or incidents of criminal activity there associated with that around or near that retail use? Um, they, you know, the neighborhood, I'm very familiar with the neighborhood over there. I mean, it's an inner city, you know, um, location, but the neighborhood in that, uh, the homeowners in that area, um, seem to care a lot about that neighborhood. I don't, um, we've been over there back and forth for, you know, the past year over in that area, just looking and searching, and we don't seem to see that there's a lot of gathering or, you know, the, the next door's um, retail location is approximately two blocks down, and there's none in the other area, so it doesn't appear that, you know, there's a lot of hanging out on the corners or anything of that nature over there. The neighborhood, there's a new development that's there within the past 10 years, I guess I say, over there. Um, that the neighbors seem as if, you know, they're taking care of the neighborhood. That's why we want to be a part of that because we don't want to be associated, you know, with that either. And we're very strict on hanging out in front of the stores and plan on working with the lo local um, police department in there. There's a uh, substation that's about two, two blocks up from where we're located at. We've already contacted them about just working with them, you know, with that to ensure that we don't have a lot of, you know, hanging and loitering outside of the property because of the way that the neighborhood is set up. And do you, for your security system, do you plan to have a uh, direct link or connection to the uh, police department or the local district or even the police station? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. For our, our protection and everyone else, you know, we and to, to assist, like I said, we, we plan on um, working with um, local law enforcement that's in that area to do that. And I think that Putting in a security system will help with that also. A video, you know. Okay, when system. I say when I say a direct link, I mean I certainly you will have a security system, but one that also feeds to the police department uh, directly. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, what's that called? Is, is what is it called when it links? Derek, do you know, know what it's called? <laughs> I feel like it's called the. Um, <laughs> Charm. It, it, uh, Something. There, there's a um, with another uh, property I did with another oh, city, watch. <clears throat> city watch. Got it. City watch. City watch. Okay. Yeah. We'll make sure that we um, link up with that. Okay. So you have no okay. objections to uh, any approval uh, should that occur being conditioned upon a security system of that nature as well as lighting on on certainly both streets to illuminate pretty well the the area and proximity mm -hmm. to no. It. Exactly. No, we have we have um, no rejections to that. In fact, it's a benefit to us for that. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add to your application at this time, then? Um, no, sir. All right. Well, thank you for your presentation, and uh, we will take that up at the end of the uh, docket. <coughs> um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the next matter, uh, calling the case of 2020 102, 1400 through 1402, Andre Street, Michael Gallagher. This was a request to use the premises uh, for or as a beauty salon. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, I know you're the property owner. Um, I don't see Michael Gallagher's name. Is it possible he's on here under the translator's name? Can you hear me? So if 
if any of our folks who have logged in for this particular appeal on that was um, Andre Street, um, is that correct? Yes. Um, if you can use the chat feature uh, or raise your virtual hand, uh, if you find your name on the, uh, the to the right of your name will be the virtual hand. You can indicate if you are here uh, on behalf of, of Mr. Gallagher or if you are the property owner for this particular appeal. Uh, it, my name is Gordon McKenzie. I'm here for the presentation. Great. I'm the property owner. Okay. Will Mr. Gallagher be joining us or are you going to? Uh, he may be under a different name because uh, someone is sitting there being that uh, he's hearing impaired that will sign for him at his location. Okay. Uh, but I'm sure he's here because he's presented in front of the board many times. Okay. Um, all right. Would you like for me just to begin? Uh, well, let me ask first for uh, any staff reports and then any reports from planning. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we have no staff reports. Okay. Planning department reviewed this application. Notice that this property is already uh, in use as a neighborhood commercial establishment, specifically a retail goods establishment with no alcoholic beverage sales. This essentially would involve converting the neighborhood commercial establishment from that type of conditional use to a personal services establishment, which is another type of conditional use allowed under the neighborhood commercial establishment category. Um, Planning department considers the building appropriate for the use proposed and recommends approval of the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. French. Um, I'm going to see if one of if the other call in user is possibly on this case. Um, so it's call in user two, phone number starting with 410710. I'm going to unmute you. You'll hear two beeps. Um, if you're here to testify on this case, then go ahead and say so. This is Sherry. Oh, <laughs> hi, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm muting you. <laughs> um, okay, well, I guess, Mr. McKenzie, you can start. Okay. Well, I can, must say that this is definitely a unique situation, and I've been presenting for quite a few times, and I think that this is cool. <laughs> uh, it really is. Uh, Locust Point is a thriving neighborhood. Uh, with ever increasing retail stores, mostly on corners, as a comeback from traditional Baltimore urban fabric. Uh, this property has evolved from, as Mr. French said, a grocery store uh, to today's demand for business corner stores in the neighborhood. It articulates strategies, actions, and measures of success across five core themes according to the 2019 Baltimore Sustainability Plan as adopted by the Commission on Sustainability. Uh, the owner, the business owner and neighbors will sustain the value of recycling the building streets and neighborhood as a unique character of Locust Point. This building, they renovated over a year ago. Uh, it was a pretty extensive renovation. Uh, when I took on the project, the building was boarded up and it was boarded up since 1950 uh and it was under one owner ever and that was the lang family uh, they used it in their early days as a convenience store they produced sausage there for the neighborhood they delivered sausage uh and the and they also lived there so it was basically the character of baltimore where you uh lived where you work uh and when they uh, passed away, they actually boarded up the store. And when I reopened it, it had all the original content in it from the early 1900s, which was unique. Uh, we gave away the content to the neighborhood uh, and hopefully they appreciated it, which I think they did. Uh, so now we're here today to uh, present that building uh, as a hair, hair salon. And the hair salon uh, that wants to go in there uh, will be owned by Jennifer Klein. Jennifer Klein has uh, been in the hair business for 25 years in Federal Hill and Locust Point. Uh, for the last 10 years, uh, she leased or is currently leasing uh, a, the, her spot in the Silo Point. Uh, her lease is up in December. 
So hopefully by this time and through the end of the summer, the building can be converted to her specific use and what she needs to do. Uh, she's married with two kids and has struggled uh, through this pandemic, as everyone knows. Uh, she's homeschooled her kids. She's watched her business fall apart through the pandemic, uh, but she's still required to pay lease payments, uh, but yet no business to that location. Uh, she's either at the point where she's either going to fold or make changes, and it's why we're here today. Uh, Jennifer wants to basically double down. She wants to buy the building, uh, which is a big step during these times. Half her staff has left, but she's still willing uh, to lace up the boots and go all in. Uh, we ask why. I ask her why. She says she basically loves what she does. So when we look at the conditional use, we looked at the approval standards under conditional use, which is the conditions and standards under the code. And when we went through uh, and go through the approval standards, there's some things that stand out that we addressed and we looked at. And I'd like to just basically go down a couple of those limited criteria for denying, uh, which is at number A1 under section 5406, uh, which is the approval standards for conditional use. And it says the establishment, location, construction, maintenance, or operation of the conditional use would not be detrimental to or endanger the public health and safety and welfare, which I don't think that's a concern. Uh, the use would not be, number two, under the standard, the use would not be precluded by any other law, including an applicant uh, or any applicable urban renewal plan. Uh, when we looked at that, we went to the, uh, the Office of Sustainability uh, and their mission statement, and the mission statement under that section under the sustainability office is the office of sustainability as a resource catalyst and advocate for a sustainable and resilient Baltimore. The office integrates the principles of environmental integrity, social equity, and economic prosperity in plans, practices, policies, and partnerships. Our goal is to provide innovative solutions to our city's challenges while engaging, educating, and motivating all, all sections of Baltimore. This property has evolved from a grocery store, as I indicated before, and uh, we're tending to spark that uh, uh, use back into the building. When I go to number three under the approval standards, uh, the authorization will not be contrary to the public interest. Uh, when we looked at that, uh criteria we said to ourselves well would any of the neighbors or the neighborhood oppose this uh we reached out to the uh, locust point civil uh, association for any comments or uh, to our try to attend their meeting uh, we called them twice but there was no return call and i assume that's because of the pandemic and no one's meeting uh, there's also a facebook social media page which is uh locust point where everyone has issues uh, and the feeds that we got was like 40 some feeds and under those feeds there was no negative comments the only question that came up was parking and i will definitely address the parking issue uh, and then i go to the next section which is required considerations the nature of the proposed site well again it's always been a store uh this when i renovated it the front of the building if you google it it still looks like a store and it is on a corner location and that building takes up the whole block from the from andre street all the way back to the alley in that building there's uh uh two parking spots there's a two-car garage so when i go to the next part it says the resulting traffic patterns and adjacent of the proposed street parking and loading uh, so there's plenty of parking on the side of the building, plenty of parking on the front of the building. Uh, the hours of uh, this location uh, or this salon would be, uh, they're closed Sunday and Monday. Tuesday through Friday, the hours are from 10 to 7.30. So during the day, there's never a problem with parking. 
And in the evening hours, once people start coming home from work, one block up next to the recreation park, there's 49 parking spots that are open to anyone. And then there's another 20 parking spots right next to the soccer ball field. Uh, so that would be the parking for the one or two clients that do come in in the evening. And then the Saturday hours are from 10 to 3. Again, because it's a weekend, people are normally parked in their spots. Typically, what would happen would be the owners and employees will park one block away in the available free spots. And the, the clients would park in the rear garage, which is a two car garage in the rear. Uh, another one of those uh, approval standards that we looked at was the character of the neighborhood. Uh, Caddy Corner from, from this location of uh, Lake Flynn is a restaurant that's been there for multiple years. Uh, people walk to that location just as they will walk to the salon because many of the clients that uh, they have do live in the neighborhood, so they do walk to the location and they also live in Silo Point. So it was convenient for a lot of people. And that was on a lot of the feeds on uh, the Facebook page that, you know, they can continue to walk to that location and that they're not moving out of the neighborhood. So that was a good thing for uh, everyone involved. Uh, up on the other one block away up on Ford Avenue, there is uh, City Limits, which is a rest sit down restaurant. And then on the other corner, uh, right on Andre Street is a snowball stand that just opened that is really doing well in the neighborhood and people love it for the fact that they can just walk, get a snowball, walk to get something to eat. And hopefully if this is approved, they'll be able to walk, get their hair, nails and toes done. Uh, Again, Jennifer uh, Klein will be owning the building. Uh, we addressed, I think, all the concerns from the neighbors and the neighborhood. And I think it's a perfect fit for uh, Andre Street and Locust Point, not just because this building has been boarded up since 1950, but it's a beautiful building. It adds character to the neighborhood and it really brightens it up. And that's my conclusion. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, first, I don't have any questions. Are there any questions from the board regarding? No. No questions for me. Questions for me. Um, if anyone on the line is in support or opposition of this appeal, you can use the raise your hand feature or send a chat. I'll give people a minute to do that. Ah, I see. Okay. Uh, looks like we have someone from the community, Deb S. I'm going to unmute you and make you a panelist so that you may testify. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, I live on Andre Street. Just to let you know, not everybody is on Facebook. Uh, there are a lot of elderly people on this street parking at no, we do not have permit parking here. <clears throat> the snowball stand. Andre, call 311 calls regarding that, uh, that uh, business. <clears throat> that building is, what is it, 1,900 square feet. And when the, it was renovated, it was renovated to be a residential. Because if, if you look in, it's a kitchen in the first floor. It's kind of screwed up the way it's laid out. But there are several floors. The gentleman explained the, the building goes from the front of Andre Street to the very back of the alley. There are two two upper floors, including a huge deck. We um, the people in the neighborhood, you know, the decks are great, but they can be a problem and don't know when to call it quits and, and a lot of these people have had phone calls to regarding that especially with the lockdown so i i just don't understand how something can go from yes if mr lang had that store his whole family had it forever and sat on it and it had, did have apartments in it, he sat on it um because i guess he wanted to give it to family but 
it was never there was never anything there those years and now we're talking about a hair salon for us whatever i don't know i look on the site it just looks like a hair studio when we have hair studios all around us and they i just don't get it i just don't get it because nobody ever talks to the people in the neighborhood or if they do they're talking to a select group and Quite frankly, many of the people that are talked to are not originally from the neighborhood or from the generations of the neighborhood or city even. And we watch people move in and out of here all the time. So they vote for all these things and then we're stuck with cleaning up the messes. I'm in opposition. I can't get on this, um, this whatever this webinar thing. So, um, I, I just don't understand how. And now we're going to say, okay, this woman who uh, is now going to invest a lot of money into doing what? Putting apartments up there. If she's not using those other two floors. There's only two spa parking spaces in the back. The side of the building, I mean, people in the neighborhood rely on these spaces to be close to their, you know, within a block or two to walk. There are approximately maybe four spots on the side of the building. The front of the building, if you drive down this street right now, I'll tell you, there's a lot of elderly people at the end of the cars here. So uh, parking is, is an issue, whether, you know, you're in denial of it or not, live here, and it's a big issue. And we really don't want to go to permit parking. Um, you know, we've, we've pushed that out for years and the civic association, not everybody belongs to that too. So, you know, you, you, you can't just say, Hey, I talked to everybody and it's cool with everybody. It's not. That's it. Ma'am, are you a member of the civic association or any other neighborhood? Community I, was association of, I was a member of the civic association. You can be a member anytime. You just got to go pay your $5. Um, I, Yes and no, because uh, I'm involved as far as like knowing what's going on, being in the neighborhood, but I've already been into the meetings where the uh, the voice of the people who have lived here in this neighborhood stable are never heard. And so it's like, what's the point? You go up there, just like on, um, oh God, I can't think of the name of the street, down across from Harris Peter where they, I wanted to put up high rise on a small plot of ground those people down there pro showed up at all the meetings protested nobody ever listens all the building that's going on around here it, it's congested port avenue god help us if there was ever an emergency and also you know because they're also putting townhouses in right now by 76 school so we've got more more houses being built in this neighborhood not think of parking and they do not think of the traffic patterns in this neighborhood. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, uh, can I? Uh, I just, I, you know, I just, I, you know, the process thing, because it seems like, you know, every time, you know, a developer or somebody wants to change the game, and I get it. I mean, yes, we want to grow and we want, you know, we want. Uh, good businesses and good neighbors, and but a lot of these businesses are not good neighbors, and we have to fight with them all the time. Well, I could say that uh, despite your, I guess, disappointment in the community association and the way it operates and how they make their decisions, uh, that in my experience on this board, that seems to be the way that uh, communities are, are actually heard. Let me finish through the organizations as opposed to individual um, members uh, here and there. Uh, it's not likely to, to garner, uh, I guess, a lot of uh, support if it's, if it's individuals here and there as opposed to a, the, the, an area that is represented by uh, a, a neighborhood association but I hear your your uh, concerns and and primarily what I'm hearing is about the parking situation um, uh, and thank you for 
for those uh, comments. Well, no, it's not, it's not, like I said, it's not just the parking situation. What's going to happen on those upper floors? Is that going to get into apartments? Or well, this is, then this you is, have, this then is you being, more. The, if, if you've been online, you've heard that this is a request for use of the entirety of the premises as a beauty salon. And that's the Mr. Chairman, board. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, I would add that this property is a, a two-story building. Okay. Uh, so it's two-story building that's being utilized, uh, we're proposed to be utilized as a hair salon for the entirety of the building, first and second floors. Uh, and so that's what's before the board, and that's what we'll consider. Uh, no well, present okay. request to utilize an uh, apartment uh, in, in the in the building. When you, when you talk about uh, the civic association, I said, people who kept this neighborhood together are a lot of them are in their 70s or older. They get pushed out of there. Why would you go when you have people that are saying, okay, well, this is how we're going to do it. I watched them railroad somebody out of there when I first moved into the neighborhood who was a long-standing person in the neighborhood. And because they were used to, you know, knocking on doors and talking to people, the people that came in and really wiped out the whole board were producing glossy, glossy um, materials, campaign materials, and put it on everybody's porch. So guess what? All the people that didn't grow up here or didn't know people here, they saw these glossy things and they voted. So everybody that was from the community was voted off. So that was, that left, uh, that left people with saying, look, you know, once again, the people who are here, you know, and live here in the neighborhood good are pushed out, pushed away. That's all. Yeah. That's all. It's just you know. It's we know the deals are already done. You know, it's just sad. It's just really sad that it has to be like that. All right. Well, again, we appreciate the uh, the concerns with regard to this particular project. Um, and I think having heard uh, those concerns, we'll move. Uh, Miss Madu, is, is there anyone else that is yeah. seeking to speak? So we have one more person um, who'd like to testify. I believe in opposition. Um, give me one second. Uh, Courtney Eister, and you are now unmuted. Thank you. Um, I am outside, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I will say I, I don't know necessarily if this is an opposition. I think maybe more of like a question for clarity. Um, I'm also a resident on Andre Street, so I'm uh, on the same side as the a uh, proposed um, salon. So just a couple doors down, um, I moved. I did move here a few years ago. So I'm I'm not an original uh, owner, but um, I am a dues-paying member of the Locust Point Civic Association. So I do find that um, you know a very valuable organization. And uh, again, as Deb has had mentioned, um, you know members are allowed to attend the meetings. Anyone can attend the meetings, but through paying dues, you're allowed to vote um, on different. Uh, different matters. Um, so um, one thing I think I did want to to clarify, and I apologize because I am i don't understand a lot of the zoning, so if this isn't the right <laughs> forum or I'm not supposed to ask this question, but I was curious about the zoning with it being a salon. Is it possible for, for the, um, the salon to also rent out the apartments? I did look at the blueprints, um, Gordon, so I could see like the, where the salon chairs are going to be and the um, you know where the pedicure space and such is going to be, but I didn't see plans for the actual like apartment or the um, the bedroom spaces. So I was just curious, like is and if that's not something, if it's not appropriate to ask that question, just tell me. But I'm curious, can that space also be rented as apartments in addition to it being a salon? That's just one thing I'm curious. So is that is that a valid question for this forum? Can I answer that? Yeah, certainly. Yep. Uh, the second floor uh, bedrooms are actually in the plans shown that it's going to be for nails and pedicures. And the first floor is going to be for hair cutting. So there'll be no room for apartments. There's no egress for apartments. Uh, and there's really no way to rent out apartments once the salon is in there. To address that specific question. Amber, you still with us? She has muted herself. Hold on. Okay. 
I am still here, and I'd like to address something else, if you don't mind. Uh, hold on one moment. Uh, let me just be sure that uh, we resolve. Yes, this. Okay. okay. I think I unmuted her at the same time. Okay, there we go. Uh, Ma'am, can you hear us? I think she muted it on her end. Uh, I think that was probably everyone's concern is whether or not apartments are going to be on the second floor since the building is so huge. Uh, 4,000 square feet. Okay. Um, one second, sir. Um, Ms. Dudu, is, if you can't hear from her because she's muted herself, is there anyone else on the line who needs to be heard? Um, that okay. Everyone. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Eister. Yeah, thank you. I got, I had like a weird disconnection. So, Gordon, I did hear you clarify about those, uh, those bedrooms upstairs. So, thank you. I, I might have just missed that part of the blueprint. Um, so thanks. That that answers my question kind of how that, that space could be used. So thank you. So I, I would say otherwise I don't have uh, any severe objections. Of course, parking, Gordon, you know, you said it, uh, you know, I know Facebook is not an all inclusive um, environment, Deb. I, I totally get that. Um, I will say that the LPCA has been having community meetings. Um, there is a Facebook page called uh, Locust Point Civic Association. I know they did have a meeting uh, via Zoom um, in June, and they sent out like a link to that. I was not able to attend. Um, I actually did um, reach out to them last week when some I heard that the, or I was reminded that this hearing was happening today. Um, I emailed who I thought was the president, um, and I didn't hear anything back from him. So, um, you know, Gordon, I know you said you were having a hard time getting in touch with them um, as well. I know they all volunteer, <laughs> so uh, you know, might just be a, a bad time, but. Um, but uh, yeah, I hadn't heard anything through them um, either. So, uh, so yeah, thank you. Thanks for the time. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Eister. Um, I think we'll, if if that's uh, all the opposition, we'll we'll head back to uh, you, sir, for the final word. Yes. Uh, just on the parking issue, uh, we are definitely aware of the issue that everyone is having. Uh, regarding the snowball stand that was just allowed to go on there approximately three months ago that's doing very well. And what's happening is because it's so good of a snowball, people are coming from different areas. And what they're doing is they're double parking on the street. They're illegally parking. So what's happening is some of the neighbors are calling 311 to try to ax that uh, violation in parking. They're parking in uh handicap spots in the parking spots that i'm referring to as far as the overflow parking which is next to the park they're parking on the side they're illegally parking on illegally parking on ford avenue they're just completely double parking and the reason being of course is because they're in and out but unfortunately what's happening because the snowballs are so popular it's not just in and out they're waiting in line and it's really messing the neighbors up to the point where they're getting aggravated which is reasonably so uh, but in this, in our scenario, people aren't going to be just temporarily parking. They're going to be coming in and women, and the women on the panel know that when you go to a beauty salon, you're there for an hour, two hours, sometimes three hours. Uh, it's not a quick in and out. Uh, so those parking spots uh, or those that would be no double parking or no congestive parking uh, next to and alongside the building. And one of the other big concerns that the neighborhood is having is that for the ferry down by Under Armour, where people are parking for the ferry and they're just leaving their cars there for the, you know, for the for the whole day and for the next day. And it's just really creating that end of Locust Point, some congestion to the neighbors so that the neighbors are being outraged that this is being allowed to happen. Uh, I've also lived in Locust Point and Federal Hill my whole life. When I was young, there was a lot of stores there on the corners, a lot of locate, a lot of family restaurants that you can go to and with walking distance was, which was great. And through my years of developing over there, unfortunately, a lot of those businesses have left, but because Locust Point is such a close knit neighborhood, people are welcoming these businesses back to the neighborhood so that they can just walk to the store or walk to get their things instead of having to get into a car and driving. So we were definitely uh, uh, concentrating and focusing on the parking issue 
And that's one of the reasons why the hours were cut in the evening from nine o'clock to 730 so that the parking, even on the overflow parking lot, isn't going to late in the evenings because sometimes they use those fields, basketball courts and tennis courts uh, up at the park. And, you know, there's only like a few clients, maybe two, three at the very most that's going to be in the salon in the evening and two of those spots are available in the rear of the building uh for on-site parking and that's uh and again uh jennifer klein uh has already been in focus point for 10 years uh she's not coming out of or some big developer or whatever she's been in the neighborhood for 10 years so a lot of people know her they they go to her business they patronize her business now and they welcome and they love the fact that she's buying a building there and investing their money to provide that service to the neighborhood. And I conclude with that. Very well. Thank you for the presentation. Is, are there any questions from the board? No. Okay. Well, again, thank you for that presentation. And uh, we appreciate that and, we'll, and, and wish you luck. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, sir. We'll now call uh, the case 2020-103, 5311 Edmondson Avenue, uh, Jim Goble. This is a request to change the use from a funeral home to a multifamily dwelling that will consist of seven dwelling units. All right, I am unmuting him now. Yes, ma'am. This is Mr. Goble? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Uh, if you hold on, I'll, I'll ask for... Uh, staff reports and reports from planning and then we'll hear from you okay yes sir thank you very well hey any staff reports nothing from staff very well uh mr Frank, planning department <clears throat> pardon me planning department reviewed this application noted this site is zoned r3 which is a zoning district it does not permit multifamily housing at the present time and therefore concluded that the board is not authorized to approve the proposed different or changed non-conforming use of the property. It's currently shown as a funeral home, which is a non-conforming use in the R3 district also. The department therefore recommends disapproval of the application because the zoning code does not authorize either a change of non-conforming use or creation of a multifamily dwelling in the R3 zoning district. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Uh, Mr. Gold, yes, sir. planning, uh, tell us, um how you what you, how do you propose to uh get around this prohibition there's to be a flat prohibition on multifamily in this uh zoning district yes sir, i understand that but i was there listening i built i had cancer and i don't have a full tongue but i was looking at back in 2009 it was very non-conforming to make it a funeral home. And I was wondering why we cannot do that at this time. The building is going to vacant. The owners are wanting to let it become full of her and not do anything with the property. We're trying to purchase it to make it viable for the neighborhood. And then they could build it into apartments. It's not the owners, but the Weather family is going to let the thing fall into disrepair. And I was, as I said, I was looking at 2009, when non conforming children had been granted that, debt, and I was hoping for the same grant with consideration today. It's not what else do we have to do because the owners want to sell the property. If they can't, they're going to let the fall into disrepair. Makes no sense to me, but you people know better than I do. But in 2009, you did it. Why can't we do it again today? Okay. Mr. Gope, um, yes, um, this is Derek Bamberger. Um, yes, sir. How are you doing, sir? 
Well, thank you very much. Uh, we're having a little trouble um, understanding you. Uh, I would suggest uh, if you have access to email uh, to put some of your testimony in writing and you can email that to our um, associate counsel, um, Livu Nadu. Uh, you can also call our office to get an email address. Yes, that's me. But I think that would be helpful in- I have, I have your email address. Sure. And um, I can, I will message my email address to you right now. Perfect. And, okay, and thank you. Um, you can email me up until Friday, and then that email address will no longer be active. Um, if you email me before Friday, I can pass that along to uh, Ms. Nadu um, and the rest of the board. Um, and I say this um, only to keep um, an accurate record of the testimony here today. Uh, so yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. I think that's a good idea. I appreciate that, Mr. Baumgartner. Um, I think I understand the gist of the concern and in, in the in the application, but uh, to be sure, I think I'd like to have uh, that written testimony so that we can. And it's a somewhat common occurrence to have um, long-standing vacant properties, or even properties that are vacant. They're inhabited. They go vacant. They're inhabited again um, for long periods of time. Um, unfortunately, those properties are oftentimes located in, in zoning districts in which otherwise reasonable uses just aren't allowed. Um, and, and it's certainly for the board to decide, but I think that happens um, more often than we'd like. Uh, at the same time, the whole point of zoning is to regulate future uses of property as well. So that can promote certain uses of property in this case. Um, residential uses of property uh, to bring uh, properties back online. Uh, well, I think uh, uh, with your uh, recommendation to Mr. Goble, uh, please accept me that, and we will conclude the presentation on that matter. Mm -hmm. Is he still on? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I'm still here. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Goble, if you would uh, go ahead and submit that uh, testimony in writing, we'd be happy to receive it. Uh, and unless there's anything else, and we'll, we'll pick that up. If, if there's anything else you'd like to state at this time, with the understanding that we are having difficulty understanding uh, uh, understanding the presentation, uh, we'll continue with this presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so, Mr. Chair, um, the so staff contacted uh, Mr. Previs. Yes, uh, apparently, he's moved offices and he's had problems getting mail and email. Um, so he said he was not aware of today's hearing and also that he's having trouble logging on. Okay. Uh, well, is there something administratively that we can do with that uh, to either put it on another? date or yeah so we can treat it like a standard failure to appear and just put it sure. on, contact him to schedule just a new date okay i would also um recommend if mr previous is going to be submitting on the record um we could certainly hold it pending any written submission um from um mr previous about um this particular appeal uh, i only note that because this is kind of a different appeal um, than our standard zoning appeals. Uh, and if Mr. Previous would like to submit on the record, I think we can legally do that uh, without putting it back on a docket. Um, but obviously, if Mr. Previous would like to be heard um, on these matters, um, then as Mr. Dewitt mentioned, uh, we can treat it like an FTA and then put it back on a future docket. All right, great. Well, why don't we, uh, Mr. Dew, have you take that up with Mr. Previous and figure out which way he wants to go and govern ourselves accordingly? Will do. All right, and that concludes today's docket. Correct.